Hi students, how are you? Hope you are fine. As I told you yesterday, let us discuss about uh, controller of money supply and credit function of RBI today. When we think about this uh, fourth function of RBI in detail, controller of money supply and credit, we can also call these measures our monetary policy measures of the nation. So basically we can divide these uh, uh, measures into two, quantitative measures and uh, qualitative measures. Once again, quantitative measures and qualitative measures. In quantitative measures, uh, basically we are analyzing five measures, five policy measures. In uh, qualitative measures, there are three measures are there. So this class also little uh, lengthy class, patiently you have to listen the class. Uh, write down the notes and try to study those contents. Is it how much you can study from this contents? That much you have to study. But the basic uh, explanation should be there in your notes when you are studying this topic also. Okay. Extra inf uh, information you can remove. There is no compulsory that you have to study each and everything. But the basic elements you have to study in detail. Okay. Are you ready now? Okay. Let's start the class. So first of all, let us analyze about quantitative measures. What are the major quantitative measures coming under these uh, policy measures? First one, I'll tell you first all the five measures for your easy understanding. First one is that bank rate policy. Bank rate policy or discount rate policy. Bank rate policy or discount rate policy. A second one is that repo rate. Repo rate. Third one is that reverse repo rate. Reverse repo rate, third one. Fourth one is open market operation. OMO. Open market operation. And last one in this uh, quantitative measures, varying reserve requirements or varying reserve ratios. Varying reserve ratios. These are the five quantitative measures qualitative measures i'll explain when the topic is coming that time so once again first one is a bank rate policy or discount rate discount rate policy second one repo rate third one reverse repo rate and fourth one open market operations and last one fifth one it is the varying reserve requirements okay so let us analyze one by one first of all what is meant by bank rate policy or discount rate policy or what is the bank rate policy of rbi bank rate policy we mean it is the policy or the rate at which central bank lends money to the commercial banks it is the rate at which central bank lends lends lending money to the commercial bank during the time of emergencies central bank lends gives money or a commercial bank takes money from central bank so lending or commercial bank borrowing lending and borrowing so now central bank lends means commercial bank accepts the money from the uh, reserve bank without any collateral or without any conditions but the rate is charged it is only for a short period it is also known as 24 hours rate in a, a australia and all it is known as official cash rate uh, in Canada, it is known as overnight rate, means it's only for a few period, means very short period. That is, it is known as 24 hour rate, means it's only for 24 hours time period. Anyway, it's a short period loan. And in this loan, central bank charges like the normally commercial bank charges a loan credit interest from us. The same way, central bank also charging interest from whom? From commercial bank. That rate is known as bank rate. We can call in other simple term, interest rate. Is it interest of the central bank over the loans given by uh, central bank to the commercial banks? It's clear now. And this advances commercial bank and law use for their uh, emergency purposes. And uh, this rate it is changing, varying. RBI changes this rate. Now I think it is a uh, 5.40 percent now itself. Is it? But I don't need to study the rate because it is changing. So you can say it is a changing rate. And uh, the, at the same time, uh, central uh, this. Uh, money what i told lending of money maybe directly central bank gives money in the form of uh, cash 
or some indirect payments means that they can buy treasury bills or any other bills uh, for securities from uh, central bank also in the form of money also that also a different form of money so that also uh, commercial bank can use uh, as their uh, sub, uh, support from the central bank this is what they saying it as the bank rate and when we study all these points we have to study specifically what will be the policy of this exchange rate during inflation and deflation that also we have to study specifically that is why this topic is that much important is a very important topic this one so we have to study compulsorily this topic with its impact so let that we can analyze that also means excess demand leads to inflation what happens what will be the uh, nature of exchange rate policy sorry bank rate policy uh, in india so definitely you have to under, uh, understand that uh, central bank wants to control the money supply in the economy so all the measures of central bank should be to reduce the liquidity of money with the commercial banks because money is with the commercial bank only they are uh, giving their money in the form of loans to the cust uh, customers so that money is uh, reaching in the hands of the individual that they will use for different consumption purposes inflation will be increased money flow will be increased is adding more fuel to the fire so that situation should be controlled means liquidity availability of money which should be with the central bank instead of commercial bank so that is why all the policy measures central bank focuses towards how to reduce the availability of money with the commercial bank when the commercial bank may have more money more money only they may be giving that money in the form of loans to the uh, people so that should be controlled so excess demand leads to inflation definitely central bank reserve bank will increase bank rate when when bank rate is increased means we can say the cost of borrowing with the commercial bank will be more so that is why very few very urgent very essential commercial bank only will be approaching central banks to get money from the uh, from this bank from a central bank so means that the cost of borrowing increased cost of borrowing increase means that that effect will be there in the loans given by the commercial bank towards the consumers so increased rate bank rate increases cost of borrowing increases means that most of the commercial bank they are not they will not approach central bank now they will wait let the rate should come down that is a policy in that way central bank controls commercial banks money supply understood and the same situation on opposite uh, deficient demand leads to deflation in the economy means there is no more demand for the goods price came down so such a situation central bank will reduce their bank rate means uh, it should be uh, by this policy all the commercial bank will be attracted they will approach the central bank to get money for them and that money means they want to give the liquidity to the commercial bank let them distribute money for the benefits of the nation is it clear now so inflationary situation bank rate will be very high deflationary situation bank rate will be decreased clear okay next one second policy is that uh, repo rate so repo rate we mean this is also the same like uh, bank rate a slight difference only repo rate we mean it's a rate at which commercial bank borrow from central bank before central bank lends money to the commercial bank now the so commercial bank they are approaching central bank to get money from that one and uh, for a short period period also short period by selling that is important thing by selling their securities approved securities of the banks valuable securities they may have with the commercial banks uh, that they have to uh, pledge there we can say in other terms it's a pledging It's like that we are taking loan from uh, commercial bank pledging our valued documents and all the same way the valued documents of the securities of commercial banks they are pledging there with the central bank and in that regard and return they are taking money from uh, this central bank in the form of loans that is lending right at which commercial bank borrows money from central bank and here uh, securities are there in bank rate right? there is no such securities mentioned clear now the same situation uh, the during inflationary situation repo rate will be very high why the cost of borrowing should come in, it will be increased so cost of borrowing increase means very few commercial bank only approaching central bank 
and this securities are one more thing this securities what is pledged there with the central bank there is one more pledging is there we will take it back after some time in later periods later date uh, it will be taken back that matter also mentioned there is it so these are uh, securities what is given to or are sold to the central bank by the commercial banks sold out there that should be bought back again they have to take it back from central bank by paying this money back along with this interest so okay so rate also be determined that's a matter relating to repo rate and at present now repo rate is recently revised by reserve bank i think it is i think 4. Point something 4.40 i think is the repo rate is it so means once again repo rate is the rate at which commercial banks borrows money from a central bank for a short period by selling their valid approved securities and in a condition that they will retain it back after some period of time when their financial matter is becoming stable uh, stability will come there that also will be taken back this also so inflation rate situation the repo rate will be increased deflationary situation leads to excess demand leads to deflation repo rate will be decreased means let more commercial banks should come to central bank to take loan and the liquidity should be given to the individual uh, through the commercial bank let them use the money because the economic stability they want to maintain again clear now two points third point is that uh, reverse repo rate reverse repo rate also uh, more or less same like repo rate but now repo rate matter means commercial bank approach a central bank here it's a uh, reverse central bank approaches commercial banks now sometimes it is also possible how central bank approaches commercial banks means that central bank sells their securities to commercial banks Commercial banks buy the securities from central bank. The same condition is there for a short period, and uh, that's the condition guarantee is that central bank will retain it back for a predetermined date at a predetermined rate also. That is there. But uh, what is the purpose of behind this one? You know, this reverse repo rate that will reduce the liquidity in the hands of commercial bank. Means when uh, the central bank offers. Uh, some good interest rate lucrative interest rate towards this transaction definitely the most of the commercial bank is that if they may have more resource in their hand they will offer this money okay instead of giving money to the individual in the form of loans there are hundreds of headaches are there to give the loans this is a better one give to the master bank let it be there and they can uh, away they can take the interest that's a good, good option for the commercial bank that is why whenever this reverse repo rate is uh, revised by the central bank uh, they are ready to commercial banks are ready to invest money yes now at present i think a recent revision is like that 3.75 or 4 percent is the reverse repo rate that also change all these rates are changing so don't uh, believe that today's rate will be tomorrow after three months of time or uh, one revision time the reserve bank most of the time revises during after this uh, covid 19 season definitely reserve bank will revise this on this matter again okay so means you have to understand that this reverse repo rate is the rate at which central bank offers so offers some amount of uh, credit means by selling their securities to the commercial banks this rate is offered by central bank to the commercial bank clear now understood and uh, liquidity this also the matter of liquidity so this time they want to take money from commercial banks how by this matter when they are offering high rate when they are offering high rate most of the commercial bank will deposit money there when they are offering their rate is less means commercial bank will say why do we think about such a deposits in commercial uh, central bank we can give money to the people in the form of uh, loans that is better is it so no need to take the risk so means that excess demand leads to inflation bank rate uh, reverse repo rate will also be very high means through that way it will be as i told you a lucrative rate will be there towards the commercial bank they will deposit their excess money uh, with the uh, central bank and that flow of money if it is given to the individual that will be circulating in the economy instead of that that money is safe with the central bank now there is no issues impact of that so excess demand leads to inflation the reverse repo rate will be very high uh, deficit demand leads to deflation that will be reduced and in total we can say one thing in order to reduce uh, increase the liquidity with the hands of central bank 
Central bank increases repo rate as well as reverse repo rate. How? In order to increase the liquidity with the commercial or central bank or to reduce the flow of money in the economy, to control the credit of the commercial bank, central bank increases repo rate and reverse repo rate. Let us analyze how it is possible. Increasing repo rate we mean cost of borrowing from central bank it comes more. Is it? Means it's coming expensive. So very few commercial bank only approaching central bank. So money with the commercial central bank is safe. No need to give from their account to commercial bank's account. Means commercial banks are keeping away from, keeping a more distance from central bank in case of this law. Clear. That much part is safe. Second part, one more thing they are doing, increasing reverse repo rate means that by selling their securities, they are accumulating money from, they mean central bank accumulating money from commercial bank. So their liquid source so, so taken by commercial central bank again. So or first thing did not give a loan second thing the money it was with them also in adjusting way it's extracted taken by the commercial uh, central bank uh, by giving high rate for their uh, interest means liquidity if the hands of the central bank reduced a liquidity with the comma uh, sorry liquidity with the commercial bank reduced liquidity with the central bank increase means reduce the flow of money in the economy very effective measures repo rate and reverse repo rate clear let us move to the fourth one i think it is a open market operations by this open market operations we mean short form we can use omo omo so it means that buying and selling of securities government securities approved securities treasury bills, valid documents and all. Uh, so this is also a measure to control the money supply in the economy. How you know? Uh, because sometimes central bank sells, like I told you in reverse repo rates, sometimes uh, central bank uh, buys from the individual. So this buying and selling it is known as open market operation. During inflationary situation, inflationary situation means that money flow is more in the economy. That time the intention of central bank is to reduce the flow of money in the economy by regulating, controlling the uh, loan uh, matters and all. So during inflationary situation, you can suggest RBI, what, the, what will be the measures taken by RBI? They will buy security or they will give uh, sell securities. Definitely RBI will compel commercial banks to buy securities from them. So commercial bank has to buy securities from central bank by giving their money. That means they have to deposit their money with the central bank. Or in other terms, you can say RBI, central bank sells their securities to commercial bank. Selling. When they are selling, they are charging money. Means from their account of central bank, that money is taken by uh, RBI. From the commercial bank account, it is going to RBI. The same way, during deflationary situation means deficient demand is there, no demand for the commodity. Then what RBI will do? RBI, RBI will buy securities from commercial banks. Let the commercial bank get more money with them. Or commercial bank can sell their securities to uh, RBI. Means that will increase the liquidity or flow of money in the hands of the commercial banks. Understood? These are the machines. Very easily we can understand the open market operation. And uh, one more thing is that this open market operation will be effective. It's not possible to conduct in a, say, buying and selling of securities in all countries of the world. So this open market operation, OMO, it will be effective uh, when uh, it uh, shows the some following uh, measures. Means we can say it will be successful. This OMO will be successful when a country follows some restrictions in their regards. Means a well developed securities markets should be there. Well developed and organized security market is compulsory. Buying and selling of securities should be conducted in a well developed, maintained. Yes, it is there. In our uh, India, it is very correct. Security market is very clear. Uh, stock exchanges are working very clearly and security market is very perfect in our country. So it is possible. And thing is, second thing is that almost all the commercial banks should have to keep sufficient reserves in their hand. 
resource i told you i will discuss that what's up when we are discussing crr once again in our money creation we already we discussed regarding the resource of commercial bank so sufficient resource should be maintained by all the commercial bank and uh, one more aspect is that the value of this security should remain constant there should not be fluctuations continuous fluctuations in the value of the securities so it should be value should be maintained a constant means well managed security market all uh, commercial banks should keep some amount of securities with them and uh, all rbi also should have adequate securities with the rbi also to give to sell and buy so sufficient security should be maintained by rbi also sufficient resource or resource should be maintained with the commercial banks also there should be a stable rate in the economy and the security market should be very well, really maintained and managed and developed a security market also anticipated then we can expect that this buying and selling will be uh, smoothly conducted without any issues in the economy clear now and uh, last point last point from the uh where uh, this uh, controller of money supply quantitative measure is that varying reserve requirements by varying reserve requirements we mean it consists of it is uh, some uh, some total of we can say legal reserve ratio as i told you when i taught, uh, took the topic of money creation function uh, we discussed about clearly regarding this uh, uh, legal reserve ratios these ratios are the amount of money kept by the banks commercial banks in their hand and from this reserve a little amount few amount should be deposited with the central bank that deposit is known as cash reserve ratio cash reserve ratio these ra ratios are also changing when i took the class money creation i told it was 3 uh, but it is changing uh, crr is 3% now uh, lrr is 18.25% now but in after 3 months it will be changing again is it every 3 months 6 months rbi revises these rates so we cannot uh, 100% say that uh, this rate will be continued all the time so now crr means as per this uh, crr ratios of rbi all commercial bank has to deposit from their cash reserves 3% to rbi so that money will be deposited there same like that uh, remaining reserves from their gold and other value documents should be deposited kept there in their uh, stock by the commercial bank that is known as slr so lrr is equal to crr plus slr it's clear now let us analyze what is the effect of crr so crr as i told you it is the uh, percentage or fraction of amount deposited by commercial bank with the rbi as per the instruction it is a legal matter legally it is decided and uh, when the inflationary situation means excess demand leads to inflation in the economy what is what you are thinking rate will be crr will be increased or decreased definitely central bank will increase crr means that much portion of money should be deposited more what means 3 become 4 means 1% extra deposit will come from commercial bank so that much flow central bank can control rather than before Yes, it. So CRR rate will be increased, and deficient demand leads to deflation. CRR will be decreased. Means let the money with the commercial bank. One percent, if it is possible to reduce, means that much money commercial bank can give in the form of credit to the poor people, by which that will circulate in the economy and that will bring some economic stability in the country also. Yes, it. That is CRR. Second thing is SLR, statutory liquidity ratio. as i told you it is a fraction of deposits kept with the commercial banks uh, without giving loans so from that amount commercial banks cannot give they could not give that money to the loans uh, to the individual in the form of loans if it is given there some penalty will be charged by rbi but immediately they have to manage the matter is it so this uh, inflationary situation means excess demand leads to inflation slr also be increased means central bank will request keep more money in your hand don't give don't uh, liberalize the policy of giving loans is it excess demand leads to inflation slr should be increased uh, then uh, deficient demand leads to deflation slr should be decreased in such a way this matter you have to study so in total lrr lrr should be increased during inflation lrr should be decreased during deflation 
this is what about the inflation and deflation means it uh, necessitates the flow of money in the economy or controller of credit by these banks means through these actions uh, RBI can control the flow of money in the economy these are the major measures coming under quantitative instruments quantitative policies understood what are the different qualitative measures of uh, RBI means monetary policy measures so as I told you qualitative measures are mainly three are there first one margin requirements second one moral suasion third one selective credit control once again margin margin requirements moral suasion and selective credit requirements or selective credit control measures okay these are the three measures coming under qualitative instruments so let us analyze one by one so when we think about the qualitative measures as i told you first one margin requirements margin requirements we mean it is uh, the difference between uh, amount of loan taken and the value of collateral given in other terms suppose uh, suppose we are uh, approaching when we are uh, approaching a bank or when we approach a, approach a bank to get loan from the bank definitely bank will ask collateral from the individual is it so do you think that the collateral what you have submitted there in the bank they will give the equal amount of uh, loans to you no they will uh, say no 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 this uh, our evaluator will uh, make the valuation of this property accordingly we will give accordingly we will give so suppose you, sub uh, you submitted a 10 lakh worth rupees property value of a property document into a bank. Do you think that you will get 10 lakhs rupees loan from the bank? No. It definitely that amount will be less than 10 lakh rupees. They will not give that much amount. Why? According to the bank, there is a policy from the RBA is that some deduction, some amount should be deducted. That deduction amount is margin requirement simple term it is the amount the difference between margin requirements means the difference between amount of loan taken and the value of property or security so offered by the borrower to the bank in the form of collateral so for example uh, suppose you submitted the value of 10 lakh property you got 8 lakh rupees means we can say 20 percent was the margin requirements it varies from 20 to 80 percentage means 20 percent less of your property value will be given in the form of loans to you that is a condition for that after suppose if uh, any legal action if you, the government bank want to take against your property your property value should not uh, the total amount of loan should not go more than your property that's the logic behind this one Suppose after five years you are not able to, before you are paying properly the loans, after five years or some time you are not able to pay the loan. Bank will take necessary action after that one. Uh, penal action will be taken, recovery will be taken. That time the value of the loan amount should not go along with the interest and other recoveries should not go more than the value of our property. That is why this precaution they are taking in this regard. So uh, this margin requirement during inflation definitely bank in the intention of the bank is to reduce the flow of money so before they were giving 8 lakh now this inflationary situation with the same property they will be giving only 5 lakhs means 50 percent means 20 percent 50 percent is the margin requirement means remaining 50 percent they will give 20 percent is margin requirement 80 percent they will give a 60 percent is margin requirement 40 percent only they will be giving in the form of loans such a way they will adjust the situation same like that opposite deflation situation they will say don't take any more more margin give maximum loan credit to the individual to stabilize the economy this is margin requirement simple thing and what all value what all things we are giving as collateral all our value documents deeds paper uh, automobiles uh, registration paper of our vehicles any other securities shares anything we can give in the form of uh, collateral those things are known as the collateral securities clear now so once again margin requirements it is the uh, difference between amount of loan taken and the value of the property submitted by the borrower to get a loan from the bank is it clear second uh, one is that i told you moral suasion 
Moral suasion, suasion, persuasion. It's some kind of uh, advice. It's some kinds of, we can say, some verbal or rhetorical technique. Rhetorical techniques or verbal ideas means something should be uh, effected. Some effective should be maintained in the economy relating to the control of credit. It is not the uh, uh, written orders. Some cases it is written orders, but most of the time it is used as an advice. Advice from the side of the central bank towards the commercial banks. Suppose, for example, whenever you are approaching a bank to get a loan from the bank, you might have observed that the attitudes and behavior of the bank uh, manager and all. From their way of talking, first they will uh, tell us it is difficult to get, they will try to convince us to get the loan is difficult now. That is a part of suasion from there. If it is this individual is coming after three months, that, that many months the bank can keep the money in their hand. That, man, that much time they can control the flow of money in the economy. That is a matter of suasion. So let us study in detail about the situation. So what are the major features of uh, moral situation? Actually, this is a psychological impact. Psychologically, suppose you, you do you know that 10 individual went to individuals went to a bank to take loan. Maximum six will get a loan from the bank. Because of the policy measures and all, because of the psychological approaches of the bank people, they will withdraw from the matter. They will depend some non-banking intermediaries for the lots. But those banking intermediaries will kill them lastly. That's other thing uh, with the high rate of interest and all. They are very interested to show to charge more interest. Is it? But the governmental loans are very stipulated way as per the instructions of RBA. So to get it that it is difficult. Is it? So it's a psychological impact. First feature is we can say psychological impact. It's a matter of psychological. Second one, it is an act of persuasion. Suasion. Persuasion means uh, making some feelings in the minds of the individual. And the third feature is that it is the policy of a central bank, directed by the central bank. And we can say it's a matter of monetary policy of the nation. And uh, it involves personal interaction between the individual means central bank uh, in their meetings and all they will they are will try to convince the situation of the nation and they will convince the stakeholders means stakeholders means the commercial bank people uh, to keep away from giving loans or to uh, stop the liberalized policy in giving loans and all and more than that also this is a qualitative tool so the, all the stakeholders should be kept away from this matter yeah from the giving of loans. So means it's also having advantage as well as disadvantage for all policy may have advantage and disadvantage. So major uh, policy uh, merits are that means these are some statements issued by the central bank. So it will uh, create some sort of control and moreover central bank will inspect. Inspection also be there. Any banks they are violating the rules and all. In the central bank will inspect means off-site and on-site both ways they will come and check and they will check through other measures whether they are violating these banks are they are violating the rules of central bank sometimes they are issuing notes also they are uh, controlling them by issuing notes they are controlling them conducting meeting in meetings of these uh, stakeholders with us rbi uh, professional uh, officials and all and moreover sometimes they are issuing threats guidelines of threats also issuing if they are not following the instructions of RBI by this, uh, this commercial banks. And these are the merits. Uh, at the same time, demerits are also there. Foreign policies are having its own demerits also. Because do you think that it is effective? More members are there means. More members are there. How it is possible? The commercial banks, I told you, Sandra State Bank itself are having more than 20,000 branches, I think. So how it is possible to control all these banks? But this as a measure, RBI uses against these commercial banks to control the credit of uh, in the economy. It's clear now. And when we are moving to the uh, last point, uh, it is that selective credit control, third point of qualitative measures. So by selective credit control, in short term we can use SCC, selective credit control measures. By this selective credit control we mean Controlling of credit in selective item. So what are the objectives of controlling of credit? Basically, credit can be controlled. That we have to study specifically. Objectives of credit control. Credit control can be uh, undertaken in order to control price stability. It is used to control price stability in the economy. First objective. Objectives of credit control. First one. 
to control price stability in the economy. Second one, it is used to control uh, financial stability in the economy. First one, price stability. Second one, financial stability. And third one, stability in foreign exchange. Foreign exchange matters. So, this not to maintain stability in the economy only, this uh, control of credit we are uh, using there as a measure of qualitative instrument. So, let us analyze how this control of credit is undertaken. Basically, there are uh, three instruments are used in India. Mainly, three instruments are used by RBI uh, to control the credit in the economy. First one is that minimum margins, minimum margins on some commodities. Second one is that regulating the consumer means charging minimum interest. Charging a minimum interest by regulating the consumer means they are giving loans only for some regulated, regulated, regulated goods. Means credit only for some durable goods. And uh, uh, there is no more widespread use of this matter. So regulating means charging a minimum rate of interest upon the commodities. And third one is that ceiling on credit. No, credit. This much beyond that amount, credit should not be given for the individual. So you might have observed that most of our farmers, they are depending these banks, commercial banks. And uh, that during that time, they will uh, stop them giving lots. They will not give lots sufficiently to the farmers. Saying that those uh, cultivation things, those cultivable things are not coming under the consideration. How can I give lots in this regard? So you do you start uh, doing this activity like this uh, with this machine by my by machine machines and all then we can consider means that means that the matter of controller of credit what is the reason you know suppose the bank is given uh, credit to a farmer to cultivate agricultural crop uh, for a six months period uh, it will be harvested so during the time of harvesting the farmer will calculate how much I'll get from the harvesting okay approximately I'll get this much harvest. So I took loan from also I need to pay this loan back with interest. So I need from this cultivation, I need a 1 lakh rupees. So what you will do, instead of harvesting that thing in on time, they will keep holding the product. Even if it is harvested also, he will hold the product in his stock, expecting high rate in the price for the commodity. What is the uh, 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 intention behind that one? Anticipating that, uh, that if the commodity is hotter there, the demand for the commodity will increase, by which when demand increases, he can charge high price. So by this high price, he can accumulate more money. That will help him to repay the loans with the interest and something he can earn. Is it? Actually, it is because of the bank gave loans. In order to avoid such situation, bank, what the bank is taking in this matter, they are stopping such farmers, such commodities, giving loans. Is it? That is a matter of minimum margin means very less uh, st uh, instruction they are giving for that. And some consumer durable also. So in, uh, such a kinds of hoarding situations is not very good in case of a country. So such a nature should not be created. That is why they are taking these three measures to control this credit. And uh, uh, ceiling of credit we mean they are uh, making restrictions. Means a person came to take loan of 5 lakhs. Bank will give 1 lakh or 2 lakhs. Making a ceiling on the credit. Uh, this much only now it is possible to give. Now if you want more, you come next year, we will give you more. Is it such a way they will give some solutions to the uh, customers when they are approaching to get the loan from them. Ceiling on uh, la uh, credit and charging minimum interest. Uh, some commodity, some exemption also given for that one. Less amount because to promote such kinds of cultivation. And some sort of subsidies also provided for them from the side of the uh, bank. These are the measures coming under selective credit control. Once again, these controlling measures are used by RBI to control price stability in the economy, to maintain price stability, to maintain economic st financial stability and to maintain foreign exchange uh, reserves in the economy. And when we think about the measures of this one, there are a positive effect also there. Merits and demerits when you think about that one. Positive effect also there, negative effect also there. And uh, during inflation situation, definitely they will uh, be very strict in regarding uh, credit. I think I told, uh, forgot to tell the matter regarding margin requirements. Margin requirements I told. Moral situation also, during uh, inflation situation, very strict instruction will be given by RBI towards the stakeholders, commercial banks regarding the lots. During inflation time, it will be uh, relaxed, waived. 
the same way in case of the selective credit control also inflationary situation very strict instruction will be given on the commodities those commodities creating inflation in the economy should not be given in any such kinds of loans towards such goods sensitive products we can call them as sensitive goods is it so positive things are there means channelizing maximum credit only towards the top priority only that's a positive uh, effect top priority goods those goods are having more priority in the economy such goods are to be promoted means agricultural commodities small scale uh, and cottage industry should be promoted more means those goods are demanded more in the economy but at the same time they are observing that there are such kinds of any hoarding of these goods also happening in the market such cases they will take action against such a products and such a uh, people also second negative uh, effect is that negative impact or demerit of this thing is that it will restrict the inflow of credit because oh, when the people are approaching the bank they have to give a loan why they are restricting the credit why do this commercial bank restrict the individual so that is not good they have to provide maximum credit to the individual otherwise otherwise what happens you know uh, whatever be the activities which all sectors not need to worry about the sectors give loans if the fund is there with the commercial bank uh, there is no restriction to give credit for the individuals that's the condition if you are the commercial bank they are not giving sufficient credit to the people what happens you know these people will depend non banking financial intermediaries they will go to local language they will go to the local finances and they will uh, be trapped by them anyway that's a matter in the economy happening in the economy regularly so better let the bank give maximum credit to the people kind of following the instructions of rbi these are the three qualitative aspects hope you understood so let us sum up once again quantitative measures are five qualitative measures are three quantitative measure first one is that um, bank rate policy second one repo rate third one reverse repo rate fourth one open market operation and last one varying reserve requirements and the quality measures are three first one margin requirements second one uh, moral suasion and third one selective credit control thank you once again